the argument against free will, in my view, we can build an argument, I think, from a law of logic, the proposition that P must either be true or false, and it can't be both, it can't be neither. We can simply ask a question of any kind of mental activity. Is it determined or is it not? That is, is it determined by anything else or is it completely undetermined by anything? If it's undetermined by anything, then it's random, and you're by definition not in control of that which is random. If it's determined by something, then it's either determined by something further inside your mind or it's determined by something external to your brain. If it's determined by something external to yourself, if that's what's determining the action, then clearly you're not in ultimate control of that action. If it's something inside of yourself somewhere, then all you do is push the problem back and you ask the question again, is that thing determined or is it indetermined? Either of which you are completely out of control in. If you say that it terminates in something like a soul, people like to do this, they say, well look, with a religious philosophy, we have the benefit of introducing a soul. That doesn't solve anything. It's not a matter of having to explain the mechanism by which the soul brings about actions. That may well be a mystery. But if it is the case that whatever it is that's doing that is either determined or it's not, and that if it's not, it's random and therefore out of your control, and that if it is, it ultimately terminates in something outside of yourself or something random, and both of which are out of your control, free will cannot exist. There's big debates about freedom of will. Uh, it's kind of striking that everyone who participates in these debates, including the people who write learned tomes showing there's no freedom of will, believe in freedom of will. Otherwise, they wouldn't write the learned tomes. I um, mean, if we we're all just thermostats uh, of some complicated kind, then what you do is determined and how people react is determined. So what's the point of the effort? You know, none. So everyone kind of intuitively believes it. I mean, we all believe that I can either pick this up or throw it across the room or not do anything uh, with it. But what is it? Well, it lies beyond, uh, I think you can speculate about what the core of the problem is. If you take a look at human science, uh, there are two concepts that are pretty well understood. Uh, one of them is determinacy. Something determines something else. You know, The other one is randomness. Uh, things happen without anything determining them. And, and that's about it, I think. Those are the basic concepts that we comprehend. And it, freedom of will just doesn't fit in that set of concepts. Well, it could be that this is just another mystery for humans. We don't have the right concept. Now, some Martian might be looking at us and thinking how stupid we are. Why do we keep the determinacy and randomness when there's obviously that thing out there that I can't point to because I'm a human? You know? Could be. And many other things that seem imponderable might turn out to be like this. I mean, once we recognize that we're not angels, we are just biological organisms, and as such, we must have limits. That's just point of logic. You could not have any capacities at all if you didn't have limits, because the capacities determine the limits. And then the question comes, well, what's beyond the limits? And we have some examples, uh, plausible examples. There may be many others.